Please join me in a pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. If you'd please join me in a moment of silence for Thomas Barnes, Regina Barnes' dad, who suddenly passed away last, uh, last Wednesday. If you could stand, please. We're going to start with the uh, public hearing, and we're going to open up the first public hearing pursuant to RSA 41-14-A, amend and release of town-owned deed restriction on formerly leased land. First hearing, and we're opening it at 7.01. Uh, is there anybody from the public wishing to be he heard on this? Yes, come forward, please. And if you'd state your name and address. Um, Kathy Keir, 7 Boston Ave. I'm a member of the Boston Four Condominium. I bought my unit in 1996, and I became a permanent Hampton resident in 2004. I went before the zoning board to approve the construction of Four Atlantic Ave due to the deplorable condition of the property where animals were, had taken refuge. My condominium property consists of four um, a detached units on a 50 by 100 foot lot. It abuts four Atlantic Ave. The two cottages in the rear of the property, one has a deck with a rail, the length of the property to the west. And the other unit, cottage, has a three foot fence to the end of the property to the east. So we already have barriers dividing the properties. The Atlantic Ave property did a condominium conversion January 2017. The Boston Four condominium ground is only one, I heard him talking and he, he talked about it was so many feet for higher. But the condominium ground is only one foot higher in the back of one of the cottages and is, is level to the ground on the other cottage um, of the Four Atlantic Ave property. So it's only a foot, one, one cottage. The other one's level. Also, he built a 17-inch wall that he added on the Four Atlantic Ave property. So. We have the barriers, he had a foot, he, he put a wall there. You know, good, 17 inches high on behind one of the cottages where it was a foot higher. Uh, I want to point out that the beach is already very congested. We live like postage stamps. T the, the new constructions are taller and bigger. It seems that every inch of land is being utilized and the land is becoming over intensified. It doesn't seem to matter that a new construction are putting decks, <coughs> etc., next to already existing decks and fences. In conclusion, I am not in favor of changing deed restrictions at the beach to allow six foot fences. It would allow further six foot fences, fences at the beach, which would make the beach more boxed in and again, over-intensified. When people build, they want more bedrooms, which means more people who need more parking. After the construction, they go, oh gee, I think I want a deck. That's why we have deed restrictions. Thank you. Thank you, and I apologize. I didn't, it, the first one we're dealing with is Paul M. Allen and Dana J. Magorio. 4A and 4B Atlantic Ave, and they're requesting to amend the deed restriction number three. No fences may be created upon said premises other than ornamental fences of no more than three foot high to install a six foot fence. So that's what we're dealing with. Is there anybody else that, from the public that wishes to be heard on this? Please step forward. 
This is the first hearing. Yeah. Good evening. My name is Gary Kier, and I live at uh, 7 Boston Ave. I am not in favor of changing the deed restrictions. Again, going up to six feet is quite a change from the three feet that they have now. But when people buy a property, the town shouldn't have to make changes in the deeds because they're not satisfied with what they bought. The old adage is, buy beware. The condo, nine condo, put up a fence in our condominium, and it was four feet high. It was against the deed restriction. It was supposed to be three feet high. They had to cut it down to three feet. That should be all around the beach, three foot, three foot, three foot. Not four, five, six, and higher. I don't think it's right. Um, there's already poles in the ground where they started construction on the six-foot fence. So I don't know if they started it without seeing that there was a deed restriction or not. But then there's a site plan that's that's in the um, declaration. Declaration states the site plan, and it's number D three nine nine seven nine. I looked it up in the Rockingham Registry of Deeds just to see what the site plan shows. And it came back invalid plan entered. So I don't know who's involved with this construction of this place. I think uh, Attorney Ells yes. wrote up the declaration. So maybe he can look into it and see why it states an inaccurate uh, uh, site plan. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else wishing to be heard on this uh, deed restriction release? Yes. We, had, um, we lived there <coughs> with Magaro and Alan. Okay. And with, um, Just identify yourself at the. I'm Jeannie Magaro. I am um, owner of 4A. And I'm Lisa Allen, owner of 4B. And with all due respect, it's not that we aren't satisfied with what we purchased, it's quite the contrary. We are more than thrilled with our purchase. There's, in regards to the posts that are there, it's, that lives there on on the property of the people who are to the left of us. Uh, well, the posts that are there are actually for outdoor showers right now. There's nothing there for a fence until we follow the correct process. There's that, but on the yeah. pro property next to us, there's Yeah, the, the woman next to us has her own existing we're, we're not sure what that is that all been about. Out for years. But we do have pictures of what we are dealing with next door as far as um, these are two oh, those are the, those, this is two different these are two okay yeah, two packets are you in the same condo as the cares as who no 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 as we stated in our letter that we wrote to the committee we're just looking to um you know just kind of secure our backyard patio furniture grills bicycles um, when we go home, lock them up and make sure they're secure. Right now, we have a lot of people cutting through our yards to get to one street to the other. Um, dogs, <laughs> cleaning up after other people's dogs. Um, we're just looking to be able to um, keep, keep, she has three dogs. She'd like to keep them in her pro her property. A three-foot fence, they go up and over. <laughs> and they do loose in the street. Um, we talked to all of our neighbors. Um, surrounding us and they're all for it um, one provided a letter I brought that to the last meeting um, it was verbal I wish I got letters from everybody but they're all for it thank you anybody else in the public wishing to be heard if there isn't I'll go to the board Gina? Is there an RSA restriction as far as how high a fence could be? Uh, there is the spite fence, uh, so-called restriction. That I right. think we've seen uh, in prior ones that indicates uh, five feet. Okay, so five feet would be that height? Okay, Thank Although you. the board in two past instances, the two that have gone through so far about ornamental fences, uh, allowed up to four. Right, okay. All right, thank you. Rusty? And why is the reason we use four as a standard? Is there? I think there was some discussion in in the in one of them that had to do with the sand dune. I believe was nearby. And the manco in the bathroom, and yeah. you couldn't see it if it was four. And the other had to do, I believe, with some uh, uh, garbage disposal containers that four feet would. Right, but also if somebody puts a pool in the yard, they have to have a four foot fence. So that's correct. It goes over the three foot anyway. So that's correct. Right. All right okay. Thank you. 
Rick? So I'm all for to go to four feet. And, you know, I think that if you look in those pictures, uh, it, nobody else has the higher uh, fences that go up to six feet. I certainly wouldn't be in favor of six feet. And, um, you know, some people could, you know, they like to feel they're at the beach. You can see all the sand. You can see all the grass. People can look over four feet, and people should know not to go oh, jump over someone if they have a four-foot fence. You should be calling the police if someone jumps over it. Okay. So I'm in favor of four. Okay, I'm, I'm, I tend to go more with the four feet also um, right now. But this is the first of the public hearings, so we're going to have to have one more, and that will be in two weeks' time. Two weeks' time. And at that time, anybody else who wants to come in and wants to uh, have anything else to say or if you have anything new to bring to the meeting, you can do that. So what we'll do is at 7-11, we will close this public hearing. And at 7-11, we will open uh, Ms. Kara Etter, 911 Ocean Boulevard, request to amend deed restriction number four. The grantee will not erect any building upon the premises within seven feet of any boundary line. Anybody from the public wishing to be heard? Uh, good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, my name is Steve Ells, and I appear for uh, Mr. and Mrs. Jason uh, Olenio. They are seated right in the, uh, the audience. Uh, <clears throat> quite simply, the property... Uh, now is within the north wall of this home is within four feet of the property line where zoning requires 10 and your deed restriction requires seven so obviously goes back several years what they would like to do is not go out any further to the north but to go up they're going to put uh, they'd like to put a uh, a new dormer uh, which will be built in space but not any closer than the four feet to the north side line uh, on the south side line they're going to add a second story deck which uh, will put them about 0.2 feet over the seven foot boundary so they're going to need relief from the south boundary 0.2 feet and from the north boundary again they're not going to that existing wall to the north will stay the same. They're just going to be building up in the, on the second story. Uh, I, I wish to point out that if you are to uh, grant the relief and remove the seven foot restriction, that will basically leave us with a 10 foot side uh, set off. That's what your zoning requires. So we certainly will have to go to the zoning board. But the uh, building inspector suggested that it made more sense for us to come to this board first on the deed restriction before we went to the zoning board. We, we have been to the planning board already uh, with this uh, proposal and I understand they were, well I was there, they said they would recommend it. So again, you're, uh, you're, not, you're not opening any floodgates. We still have a 10 foot side setback. This is a long standing property. It's already four feet from the north property line, and we're just going to go up basically a, a dormer uh, on the second story. And, and again, on the south side, we're going to add a very small amount of decking that will encroach into the seven feet. We'll need variances from the north and the south setback, and we'll also need a front setback, but that we're not anywhere near the seven feet on the front. So that's, that's all we have. I'm happy to answer any questions. It's, I had a hard time until I looked at the plans, visualizing what we were, were going to do, but if you think in terms of going up rather than going out, that's, that's really what's happening. But where they'll be building will be closer than seven feet. Okay. It, yes. Might I just ask a question? Go ahead. Um, Steve, we are at the point on a couple of other ones where uh, the board has granted modifications of deed restrictions and we're putting that in a document to reflect the board's vote uh, and so you're looking for a modification uh, not that, that is different depending on the side you're on yes and I was uh, the way I phrased it it was to, to completely eliminate the restriction 
because again, you have a 10 foot side setback in your zoning. At this part of the beach, your zoning is much more restrictive than the deed restrictions, a little different down at the main beach. Uh, we will certainly accept, if, if that's the best we can do, is a modification of the restriction to coincide with our plans. But I had asked for, a, just wipe it off the books because it, it's meaningless given your zoning and given the fact that the thing is already there. But that's obviously for the board to decide. Anything else? Anybody else in the public wishing to be heard on this uh, issue? Seeing none, we'll go to the board. Regina? I have no further questions right now. Thank you. Nothing right now. Okay. okay, then we'll get this first public hearing. We'll have the second one two weeks from now. And uh, 716, we're closing the public hearing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Public hearing pursuant to RSA 41 14 colon, uh, colon 14 dash A proceedings, donation of land to the town first hearing, Tuck Realty Corporation, parcel A, land to be deeded to the town of Hampton and combined with map 150, lot 52, containing 1.33 acres. Uh, anybody from the public wishing to be heard on this? We'll go here first, Candy, and then. Yes. I'm Tuck Realty Corporation. Mike Garrity from Tuck Realty here to answer questions or make any presentations. All right, then have. why don't we go to Candy and listen to her first. Sure. Do you want to go first? Candace Stelmack, 488 High Street. I abut the property that's being discussed. Uh, I had given copies to be distributed to the sec selectmen of some of the history of the boundaries of this lot, and um, I would like to, that to be made part of the hearing without my reading it. Okay, thank Fine. you. Uh, just so the public knows, I don't think they're informed that a study's been going on for years to determine the outline boundary of the pond. And we shared the uh, results of all of those, the research. And well, I believe it showed to the purchaser's satisfaction that the town did own the pond. Based on the old deed research, there were a few changes made in like the 1900s, and then some people came back and said, you know, no, it really is the edge of the pond and stuff. So there's a lot of confusion and it may have to be surveyed. And we're sort of suggesting that it should be surveyed because there's a lot of people surrounding the pond that um, could get caught up in a, a deed problem when they go to sell. Their boundaries aren't going to be the same. Um, I don't know if they're paying taxes on that property that they don't own. And I just think the whole thing should be cleared up so that the next person <coughs> down the line that wants to sell their property or do something with it doesn't get caught up in the deed problem the boundaries and I, I'd really like to know the town's feeling on why you're accepting it I'd like the public to know and I'd like to know why um, the gentlemen are giving it to you and why we're rushing it why can't it wait till January or whenever March okay anybody else from the public wishing to be heard on this no let's go to Mark Yes. Um, this has been through the uh, planning board process, and I, it may be the case, I don't see it here, that one of the conditions of approval is the donation of this particular land. So the subject of whether or not who owns it uh, may have been discussed in the course of that process. Mm -hmm. I believe the manager has had uh, more um, of, a, uh, of a contact with this uh, than I at that, on that subject. And the applicant is uh, is here to you talk about that. Sure, I can either you want me to set anything up, or do you want to just have a discussion, just in in general about it? Just have a discussion. Sure, discussion. I've got I've got uh, the plans here if, if we need to look at them. Uh, but I did meet with the, the you correct the the planning board's condition of approval was that uh, this portion of land um, be deeded to the town in, in a quick claim fashion, uh, which we're happy to do. We actually 
suggested that as the as the best course of action because there seemed to be some question of ownership. Our survey, our surveyor, David Collier from Jones and Beach Engineering, is has done all the research, compiled all the data that's been given to him by by Candace and, and others, as well as done certainly his own due diligence and research, and he's. Um, stands behind his work that that the the present ownership of the of the portion of land that we're pr preparing to, to deed to the town uh, is owned by um, uh, by the, the Mason family currently. So once we take title to the par the parcel, um, subject to your uh, appr approval, uh, would be certainly willing to donate that land to the town in 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 fee. So it it makes sense for the town to own it in my in my mind. But if the town doesn't want to own it. We can certainly retain ownership of it. We just have to go back to the planning board, unwind that condition. I believe, um, in speaking with uh, your town manager, that he's come before you several months back, and the board, uh, at least maybe in a uh, maybe a show of hands, or I don't know if it was a motion that you made, but did make that make a determination that you would you would like to accept the the land as as a gift. So that's how we proceeded. Want to ask him any questions, Candace? How does that affect the next person that comes along that does not go by the same rules that he did? He's actually giving the land back to the town. He's making a deed correction. Well, again, if I if I might, uh, we we have a surveyor that has stamped a plan. Um, I guess if there's a discrepancy. Uh, that could be vetted through some process, but we have a surveyor uh, that's that's actually on the New Hampshire Board of Surveyors. He's been a surveyor in the state of New Hampshire for a long, long time, well respected. That that uh, that this is the boundary, and what w what we're trying to do is uh, I'm not clean something up, but we're offering something. I think probably the the better stewards for this portion of land is is quite frankly the town. Um, this, a lot of historic features of this property, the mill and, and the dam and, and what have you, that I think all belong together. So we're trying to do what we think is the right thing um, by, by gifting it to the town. Uh, again, we're, if, there's, if the town doesn't wanna, want it, which I, sus I, I don't think that's the case, but if, if the town doesn't want it, we would just, we would just hold title to it. Okay. So. My recollection of this is that the manager, from the manager's examination of this, uh, the information provided previously by uh, Ms. Stelmack was that there is not, uh, there had not been a stamped plan provided on her end, whereas there is on this end. And uh, if if the town already owns it, in, in any event, this will con serve to confirm that as much as anything. Okay. Okay. Anybody else in the public wish to be heard on this uh, subject? Let's go to the board, Regina. I have nothing, Mr. Chairman. This is our first hearing, right? This is our Correct. first hearing. This is our first hearing. At this time, I got nothing. But... Rick, I'd like to hear from Fred. Yeah, I think I think what we need to do is is we, this is our first hearing, so we have to have another public <coughs> hearing in two weeks. And if you come back with your plans again, sure. and if the town manager is here because he's done a lot of discussion with you on it, and if Mark researches this a little bit more, so that we have a little bit more information on it. And we'll discuss it at that point. Sure, and I'm happy to meet with anyone you know in in the interim. I'm happy right. to meet with Fred and Candace if you want to sit down and yep. um, it, it's if we can sort of get some clarity on the subject okay. before we come back. I'd be happy to do that as well. Pretty good. Great. Thank you. Anybody? Can I say one yeah, more go thing? ahead. Go ahead. My problem is not with him. He's in this pickle because the town has not kept up with the the deeds and the surveys in this area. They've been changed over the years, and they were flawed deeds. If I were to file a plan within the next week with a stamp, a surveyor stamp, I'm really gonna muddy the water. The reason this whole thing started is because when we were registering the grist mill on the historic register, they wanted to know what the north boundary was. And we couldn't tell them. So we did the research and found out the town owns the pond, as far as we're concerned. And I don't quote me on those words because I'm not a surveyor and all that. But even on his plan, it says, the mill pond is subject to the rights by others. That's kind of a vague thing that says there's a situation going on in that area. I think the onus is on you okay. more than him that we figure this out. 
But we will have we will have clarification for the next meeting. All right. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Thanks so much. Uh, we're going to close the meeting at seven twenty-five. Seven twenty-five. <laughs> what we're going to do next? Thank you. Is we go to public comment, and I know there are a lot of people here who want to speak on Bernie's, and we've already had two public hearings on Bernie's. We've extended the time that people could put written comments in to, to, on that aspect. So what we're going to do is we're going to accept people speaking at the public comment. If they have something new to add to the issue, not a rehash of things before. So if somebody has something new to add to the issue, we will uh, entertain listening to them. And the public comment is three minutes per person, which we will do. So that's how we're going to handle the Bernie's thing right now. So we will open up the public comment if there's anybody wishing to speak. Okay. <clears throat> Please state your name and... Good evening. I'm Patricia Murphy. I live at 4 Haverhill Avenue. Uh, 149.2 of the code, the Hampton Code, identifies that it is the board's obligation to regulate entertainment activities for the purpose of securing and promoting the public health, comfort, convenience, safety, welfare and prosperity, and peace and quiet of the town of Hampton and its inhabitants. At the issuance of the temporary license on April 17th, it was anticipated that mitigation efforts would be undertaken by Mr. Fleury and actual testing of the sound with a band, not just the PA system, would have been accomplished by today, June 12th. Due to the weather, that proved basically impossible with the exception of the last two weekends, June 3rd, excuse me, June 3rd, which was miserable, and last weekend, which was nice. My husband will address the findings of the sound engineer, Doug Bell, whose report I submitted to the board this afternoon. Saturday, June 10th, was the only testing day that both the installed mitigation efforts and a live band was done on a summer night. It was, it is an inadequate uh, information to issue any permanent license. 459.15 of the code provides in pertinent part the using, operating, or permitting of an entertainment activity on any premises in such a manner as to disturb the quiet, peace of repose, and or comfort of the neighboring inhabitants is prohibited and is governed by all of the following provisions, including subsection A, noise levels, which states clearly it, it shall be unlawful for any licensee to emit or cause to be admitted, emitted any noise beyond the boundaries of his or her premises in excess of the noise level established by the regulation, which is 75 decibels until uh, 11 p.m. and 50 decibels between 11 and 1. After both live tests, it seems that if Bernie's complies with the ordinance at the boundary of his premises, which is the law, there'll be no problem in the neighborhood. If he complies, I don't believe there'll be a problem. However, there needs to be some mechanism to validate the noise level. Uh, since the police department lacked the resources and training to do so, which is why I'm requesting that sound monitoring that my husband Bob will address in his comments is implemented. No permanent license is warranted uh, given the outrageous, if unintended, violations last summer. Indeed, without monitoring, no temporary license should be issued either. Neither the town nor we, the citizens, should have to incur the substantial cost to police the noise that cost should and must, must fall to the business creating this problem. In summary, any license issued must be temporary and independent monitoring must be required. If not, no license should issue. And if I can say, I've, I've talked with Al Fleury a number of times. I, I believe that he didn't know the problem that got created last year. I think it was inadvertent. I believe in good faith he's trying to work with us. But even having said that, and really, I. I Al's been, I, I think, really stand up. But, you know, this, having said that, I don't think we, I don't think we can just trust that it's going to work out. I think we need some monitoring to protect us all. Okay, and so that we're not doing this again next year. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Anybody, yes. Jackie Cavanaugh, 6 Dumas Ave. Uh, this may not be new to you, but it's new to us to come here and to speak to it. It's just in general the noise factor. I'm third generation Hampton Beach. We formerly were on L Street, 
my relatives own the home on L Street, and it's intolerable. That's a different story. But we are up in Boar's Head. The windows are open. We can't sleep. It's a quality of life issue. We say we're a family beach. I can't see how this is leading to a family beach. I can't believe the island section, the Haverhill section, and up to Boar's Head can really rent homes in the future for families who do not sleep. Um, I have heard, I don't know the gentleman who owns the bar, I've never spoken to him, but I've heard he works with the neighbors. We're up on Boar's Head, I do not know one person that he's spoken to up there. So I hope we can work this out. It is quality of life. I'm not saying shut the music off. We're looking for a reasonable time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else wishing to be heard from the public? Yes. My name is Bob Blair of uh, Fort Haverhill with Trish. Um, I just want to go over two things, and I hope to do it quickly. So uh, you should have a report from Captain Artucci. Uh, people, uh, some of the neighbors of White Island got together, hired this engineer to do some monitoring. Um, they monitor it. They, uh, he was able to monitor on three occasions. Uh, one was a system demonstration, and the reason it was a demonstration is there was no band. So we turn the uh, system on to about 70, between 75 and 85 decibels, and we walked around the neighborhood. We walked around with one of the selectmen, Regina, we walked around with the chief. And, you know, it was tolerable, but a little loud, right? That was, you know, it's, it's very subjective, right? But I mean, that's what I would say, walking around the neighborhood, it was tolerable, but a little loud. That's at uh, 75 to 85 measured from the glass wall at Bernie, so basically from the property line. Remember, no band. So the significance of that is um, bands bring their own equipment. They bring their own amps, they bring their own speakers, and uh, almost every musician in the band has an amp. So while the PA system is able to direct the sound, the band amps are just speakers. They're just going out. Now you can turn them down, but you gotta be aware that the guy giving the guitar solo or the drum solo is over 75 decibels. You, you, gotta, you, you gotta be aware of that. So it's a big, I, I think a, a huge variable. Every band's different, every band plays different music, Every band has a different genre. They have different members. You know, they have a horn section. Some don't. Uh, it's a it's a big variable, and I think it's very tough to monitor. The uh, we did it on two other occasions, um, and this was with a band. Okay, so this is significant. And the, again, it was you know. I think he did a reasonably good job the first weekend. I'm referring to June 12th, June, I'm sorry, June the 2nd, but he had violations. I'm not really gonna go into this, but there were violations. And then we did it again, uh, which was the, the 10th. So that was uh, just this last Saturday. It was over 75, almost the whole night. So if you, if you wanna look at the report, you know, it's kind of all, uh, Red is violation. So you don't see much blue there, you know. Now, you can interpret what I'm saying fairly badly, I think, uh, but I really think the opposite. I, I, what I think this proves is if Al stays at 75, the neighborhoods, and, and I include Boar's Head in this because the engineer went up to Boar's Head on both these tests, and it, you know, they, it was fine. Both. So, you know, again, for the Boar's Head people, uh, may not be aware of the dates, June 2nd and this last Saturday, June 10th, it was fine. So I think what we've proven is the ordinance is fine. He just has to obey the ordinance, and you guys have to enforce the ordinance. Which brings me to topic number two, and again, you have this, it's monitoring. Um, I'm not a sales guy for monitoring. I'm sure there's lots of monitoring things. I've given this, a minute extra. Can you wrap it up? Yes. Thank you, sir. Please. This is just sits on a pole. Al has a bunch of light poles. This would just sit in the middle of the light pole, and it would monitor uh, anybody since Wi-Fi. Anybody could dial in. It 
it can also um, give notices to Al's employees that, hey, it's over. The guy with the guitar solo, you gotta, you, you gotta turn him down. You know, so it would help the neighbors, it would help Al, and I think it would help you guys. By my count, this is the fourth meeting, and I'm guessing this year, and I'm guessing it's not gonna be the last. And we're gonna all meet again next year. If you get the monitoring, it's done. Thank you very much. Is anybody else from the public? Yeah. Something new. Well, I don't know what I'm going to do, but uh, we'll see. Thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm Jane Bradley. I live at 26 Cliff Ave on Boar's Head. And I have to say that last summer it was horrendous. This summer so far, there was one night that I heard it. I could hear the drums. I could hear drum beating but it wasn't nearly as bad as it has been. Um, however, I really liked what you were saying, Mr. Blair, about monitoring it, because it can very easily get out of control, I, I believe. I have no proof of that, but I, I believe that. And it was so horrible last summer, just sitting on my, on my deck. I couldn't read, I couldn't concentrate. It was horrible. And I don't want to see a repeat of that. Um, I guess that's pretty much all I have to say. I just don't want it to be as loud as it was last year. It really is intolerable, and we have, you know, it's it's just outrageous. So, thank you. Yes. My name is John Cattarelli. I live on Bradford Ave. Uh, to give a perspective, last year was intolerable. This year, much better. I think Al's done a lot of great things. And, and paid attention to the neighborhood and reduced the sound dramatically. Um, I think we're very close. Uh, I think it's proven that he's listening and working to the neighbors. We, on the other hand, you know, uh, are monitoring it. We have to. There's no other way to really tell the decibels. Your ears, my ears tell me it's, tells me it's getting much better. Uh, but, um, but there's a law. There's an ordinance law, 75 decibels. If he's in substantial compliance of that during the course of an evening, I probably would say that's okay. Uh, if there's violations, that's probably something that the man over on the side of the room can deal with. Um, but, you know, we're getting there. But my point is, you know, I wouldn't go for a full license the rest of the year. We haven't had time. We haven't had, we've only really measured it one time. Let us measure it a little bit, you know, over the next 30 days. Give them a temporary license. 30 days from now, you know, we'll have a much better feel for it and strongly consider the monitoring device because I think that's that's the technology that'll solve everybody's problems. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. <coughs> Hi, my name is Dr. Bruno Battistoli. I own 6 Bradford Avenue in Hampton. Uh, I have some uh, standing and background in this issue. I apologize for not being at previous uh, previous hearings, but uh, my teaching schedule does not allow it. I have a PhD in mass communications. I spent 20 years in the entertainment and hospitality industry, uh, including uh, designing uh, and installing and supervising entertainment facilities. I've been a director of food and beverage and a director of sales and marketing in four-star hotels. Uh, I have a large background in this, um, so I, I know a bit about this. Um, simply put, I think you've made a terrible mistake uh, and by allowing uh, the creation of an open-air uh, entertainment and con concert facility uh, in such a fragile environment. Uh, I think the repercussions of it you haven't yet seen because it's so new from last year, but I think you will be dealing with this for a long time. Uh, I'm, I'm astonished um, that such a facility uh, was built. I can't imagine another community between here and Miami, frankly, um, that, that would allow uh, in such a fragile environment such a large entertainment facility. You've basically allowed a professional concert facility of some 10,000 square feet that would hold 1,000 to 1,500 people uh, to be built 
in an area that's already jammed with people in traffic and acoustically uh, very, very fragile. I live in New York. In New York, we have to do an environmental impact statement. We have to do a seeker, uh, an environmental quality review before a board like yours would even listen to such a proposal. Um, this is a major venue in our town. Um, our particular property uh, was built in 1890. Uh, we have two condos and four units. And uh, frankly, uh, last year, uh, I had to turn the TV on to drown out the music. I could hear every word of the vocals, and I am one block away. I have only Haverhill between me and, and the music. I run a business, too. I read a lot about Mr. Flory's business, but I run a business. I run a business that some of my tenants have been there, some of my guests have been there third generation. 60 years they've been renting on that property. Um, I had a woman tell me last September to my face, if that bar is here next year, I'm not coming back. I only had 30% return this year of return guests. I put more than $100,000 in my property um, last year. My property is assessed at more than $840,000. It's not even the most expensive property on these streets. I'm about in the upper middle. I pay a lot of taxes, and it's a family business and we need the business. I'm down to 30%. I normally get 50 to 75% returns. I'm not putting all the factors on Bernie's. I'm not putting this all on Bernie's, but I just, I simply, as somebody that's done this, has managed a, a civic center with 3,000 square feet um, entertainment in New York, I, I'm just kind of astonished that that you're not thinking about this stuff. A thousand people and 2.5 people per car is 400 cars. You have 271 parking spaces across. I'm gonna ask you to wrap it up, please. This is, this is a really bad deal. And I think your exposure on this is enormous and varied. And I think, I know myself, I can only speak for my own business. I will take what recourse I can. It's already jammed, uh, it's loud, and I don't want to see it go back to what it used to be, which was the young party you're showing up and no families, but you can't be all things to all people, and I think you've made a terrible mistake. Thanks for your time. Yes. My name is Philip Ramsey, and I own five. You Bradford want to state Avenue. it when you get there so they can hear the microphone. My name is Philip Bradley, and I own 5 Bradford Avenue with my wife, Susan Bradley. Uh, I think what's new tonight is that we appeared before you a few months ago, and we were hoping we'd be able to do some testing and come up with some sort of baselines. And what's new is we were not able to do that in large part because of the weather. There just hasn't been sufficient testing. Mm -hmm. So what else is new is that Mr. Blair has come up with a proposal uh, for some sort of monitoring device which would let everybody see where the sound levels are and establish some sort of baseline. And it would allow the police chief to see those numbers, it would allow you to see those numbers, it would allow us and the public to see those numbers. And then we could use those numbers over the course of this summer to see what the sound levels actually are. I mean, we can all tell you, uh, those of us who live in the area, that it was objectionable in the second half of last summer when the larger um, place opened up with the, with the new sound system. But we just need more time to figure out what these sound levels are going to be with the mitigation efforts that Mr. Fleury has made. We certainly appreciate that he's, that he's making an effort, but I think we need, before we grant this license, um, we need to take a step back and uh, grant it provisionally and with certain cutoffs, and then we need a monitoring system so that we can, we can uh, come back later. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else in the public wishing to be heard? Good evening. My name is Frank DePippo. I live at 26 Dumas Ave up in uh, Boas Head. And um, I've submitted a letter. This is new information and a recommendation. My letter said that you control this permit. And you know that. And I know there's a town attorney that sometimes here are in the building, and he could tell you that. Um, you control the cutoff times. You should say as they would in a city. I'm a former assistant corporation counsel for the Entertainment Licensing Board in Boston many years ago. 
and people should be allowed to speak here today, but you should know that you control the cutoff times, and you should say, if there's a problem, someone is allowed to shut it down as they would in Boston or any city. So you should have conditions in this permit. It should shut down during the week. I would submit at 10 p.m. as far as the loud music, the, the outside music, because other venues have put up glass. This individual chose not to do that. He might be a great guy, and everyone in town says he is. He is an employee. He and his employees are great. But it still is a problem. I can hear it up in Boar's head. I can hear it up in Boar's head loud enough that even though I'm down the street from the cliff, I thought it was a party in the neighborhood. So you, as far as the town managers, and I see one of them is here tonight, have the ability to say, during the week, 10 p.m., on weekends, 11 p.m., hypothetically. He will indemnify the town and will pay all legal costs in the event the town is sued. He will escrow X amount of thousands of dollars for police overtime because you know what's going to happen, and I can't speak for the chief. I see that he's here today, but it becomes his problem when his phone lights up with a bunch of nuisance calls for something that shouldn't be a nuisance. Someone should be able to go out, whether it's the assistant manager or someone, and say, guys, we just got 10 calls. That's it. You're done. Because what you're doing is someone just noticed, I mean mentioned, is you're opening the door to someone coming in and saying, I'm going to do the same thing from the roof of my business because you've okayed this behavior that, has, that you've been told is a nuisance by many residents. And again, it's supposed to be a town beach. And there's also a question who can vote on this. And I'm not speaking to that, but I'm sure the town attorney told you that. But people at prior meetings have said, I'm a close friend of this person. I've worked for this person. Ask, ask, ask you to wrap it up, please. Thank you. But let me just finish that comment. So you have to, under the New Hampshire rules of conflict, you have to instruct when you do vote on this, who is even allowed to vote. And the final thing is, I'd ask that you table it so that you have enough time to study this. If you do grant it, it should be granted for two weeks only. But, um, sir, Mr. Chairman, thank you for thank giving you. me the time. The voters are watching tonight, and we appreciate your taking the time to listen to us. Thank you, sir. How many, business, how many um, properties do you own in Hampton? Are you the man that owns multiple properties? I own more than one. More than one. But it, it, I agree with the people that are saying it's turning it into, for some people, I've heard this for people on the South Beach, it's turning it into a nightmare for their rentals. So, thank you. But thank you very much, uh, Mr. Waddell. Thank you. Anybody else? <laughs> Public wishing to speak, he'd be heard. <laughs> Seeing none, I'm gonna go to the board. Regina. So we heard some new information tonight, but I have a question for, I guess, anyone. I'm not really quite sure who to ask it for. This year, I know we had a problem last year. That's why we're all sitting here right now. Now, as far as Bernie's, Bernie's is there. It's in existence. Al, Al is a businessman. He pays taxes in this town, too. I thought we all agreed to figure out what the problems were. Many people in the audience said there hasn't been time. We've had a really crappy spring. And what this weekend was really the first time that we had the actual beach going on. We had traffic. We had motorcycles. We had people walking. All that. Um, yeah. I think that stuff helps. You know, I know I went out with the chief one day and we tested it. I didn't think we've had anything over violation. We were out there that day. Um, and I think that probably we need some more time. As far as Al being responsible to have a device for us to 24-7 monitor him, how, I don't even understand how is that going to work. So everything on the no, every, any type of noise that's right around Bernie's, I would imagine would get picked up on that. No. No, Bob, you yes. can't. All right, let's not. We're not going back and, and forth. And also, and also, I'm guarantee you right now that if you go down with your monitors and you go out <coughs> with one of other restaurants down that beach, they're going to be in violation too. No. 
Yeah. Could could be. Yeah, but at this point, at this yeah. point, I went to the board. The board's speaking. The it's public had their opportunity to speak. So. We're not going to go back and forth. So I'm going to make a motion that we give um, Al. Can we go to the board first. Oh, all right. okay, Rusty. Well, um, I think we have. The problem is we haven't had enough time, but we've had good weather. I've been down twice to Bernie's. I was down there on Friday night. I couldn't get down there Saturday night. Um, they had a band playing. Um, I, I noticed some of the stuff they did, like the drummer had a cage around or a glass in front of him, so it was keeping the sound out. Uh, when, you, when you can stand up on the on the, in the up the stairs there and have a conversation like I am right now with the person next to you, and the music's not drowning you out. Um, looking around, I went outside, went across the street. You could you could barely hear what was going on. Um, I drove down to Boston Ave, 10.30, pulled down Boston Ave, and I couldn't hear anything. I pulled on Haverhill Ave and, and shut my car off, and the music coming out of one of the houses there was louder than Bernie's was. Uh, so if you have sound uh, monitoring devices, how can you say that it's coming from which area it's coming from? So I, I don't know how that's going to work. Um, Boar's Head, I, I, I've heard there's been a lot of people up there. I don't necessarily see if we can say all of that's coming from Bernie's. Yes, I can't. Yes. Well, um, I, I've uh, just talked to some of the police officers that have gone up and they've heard it, and it hasn't been as bad. And I've known I've known uh, uh, that the sound people were up there. I'm not saying that there isn't sound going up there last year. I know that Bernie's has has tried to do that, but I still don't think we have en have had enough season. To, to to make a judgment whether yes it has or no it hasn't. I think that still needs to be addressed. So. Rick? Um, well, we've heard a lot here. Um, people like Jane Bradley, she, her parents have owned this place, I think, since the 1920s, or her family. So these people know where the music's coming from. Um, without a doubt, they can hear the words and this and that. Um, what I have a problem with here is that really this is against what our master plan is all about. Our master plan is that this is a family beach. And our master plan is that we do have entertainment venues. And when our master plan was done, it was done, it was 11 o'clock, how the people were allowed to keep the music. Now there are many people, and I've talked to other business people that have contacted me on Ocean Boulevard. <clears throat> And they have kept to what the master plan is. And they actually play after 11 o'clock, but guess what? No one's complaining because they're very responsible of how they do it. This, um, and I'm sure that Al is very responsible how he does it. It's just that this is something very different, like that man that talked about. This is a 10,000 foot uh, place that's been allowed to be built on top of a roof where there was no other businesses at one time. And you know, we just really have to think about this. I'm not in favor of granting anything that will be done so that we have the same problem that had last year, which was the people had no recourse. I think that is disgusting that they would even have to face that or get those type of answers from the police department that they uh, contribute to when they pay their taxes. Today, when I was in the office to pick up my paperwork, somebody came in representing Stacy James, and they want to go and have the same thing to 1159 also. Presently, they are at, uh, they have a requirement that they can only play till 9 o'clock. Now, I was on the planning board, or probably the planning board too, but I was on the zoning board when Stacy Janes came to build their porch or deck or whatever it is, which is in a very, very, very residential neighborhood, that the people did nothing but complain. They've complained. And they there's a lot that happens because it's of other of whatever's down there. There's, it's a high, high. It's an intensive area, but Stacy Janes was having problems, and I can't remember 
how the people complained, but when they, I, I was to understand today, and I've asked that somebody look into it, including Mr. Gerald, uh, and Christine is going to look into it, of why they have a nine o'clock uh, closing time for their music. But I definitely remember that that was imposed by the zoning board. And I wonder how many other uh, businesses that when they've got their approvals for their businesses had times put on there that now all of a sudden no one's looking at anymore. So now these people aren't being dealt with. But I can guarantee you when, there's, when they have a, a band, if that's what they have in mind, I don't know what they have in mind. But when they're starting to have more music at a later date there, it's going to be chaos. And we have to look at what, we, what we're doing here. This is a, we have to legally follow the master plan. And the master plan says that this is supposed to be family oriented. And we have to listen to that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I just want to add that on the monitoring thing, I think it would be extremely difficult to isolate exactly. I mean, well, you would have to have somebody very technical tell me how they were going to isolate exactly where the, we're not going to go back to public, exactly where it's coming from, you know, so I think that would be a difficult, that's my opinion, if it's different, that's fine. You had a motion you wanted to make, Regina? I make a motion that we continue what we've been doing and extend the 30-day license with no restrictions till whatever 30 days is. We'll extend for 30 days? Yes. I'll second that only to see what happens. I also would like to say that I am in favor of looking into what that, uh, whatever you're talking about, the monitoring thing. And that shouldn't be between us. That should be between Al and them. It's up to Al to make them happy. Yeah, absolutely. But I mean, if they can just bring that information that, that shows how they, they can isolate it, I'd be it. glad to look at it. All right? I'd be glad to look at it. So one question, if I may, um, any conditional conditions or under the same terms that you've currently same done? Same terms as same we terms. had before. We have okay. not had summer yet. OK, we've had a motion. We've had a second. All in favor? Oops. I may one more. Yeah. Um, that 30 days will put you to, to July 12th, which is the middle of the week. Um, and if it's a temporary, you have meetings on the 10th and the 24th. I would suggest you put it for a board meeting so, again, you can deal with it. So, so either the 10th or the, the 24th. 24th. Yes, I agree. The 24th of July. Change, yes. That's a second. Okay. All in favor? It's unanimous. Uh, Point of order, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Unless I miss something, you're still in public comment. Did I? Yes, where it's, oh, that's right. And this is an agenda item for. Yeah. I know I was upstairs for a few minutes, <laughs> but. Sir. I, the board can uh, vary its agenda from what you've got. Okay. It's clear that the board decided to take up an issue that's uh, on later business. Yeah, and we took it, you know, we do this okay. all the time. Okay. Okay. Al well, is sitting just, here, so if you have a problem, Al is sitting right here. You've got the legal opinion. All right? Great. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, moving on. Wait. Guys, I, I never get to see everybody once. I just want to throw out that I, I haven't really, I, they have my phone number and all that, but I haven't really heard from too no. many people. If they want to talk to me and have Outside, any suggestions yeah. okay. to work together, they can outside. Yep, thank you. Thank you, Al. <laughs> uh, announcements and community calendar. Okay. I want to um, thank the uh, Hampton Fire Department. <coughs> And I want to start out by thanking uh, Chief Ayotte. Oh, yeah. Regina, can we clear this out, please, very quickly? We'll take a couple of minutes so that we get some stuff to talk. And can we talk outside, please? Okay. Gentlemen, can we do it outside? You all need to go upstairs. That's true. But it's just standing on the stairs. You can't hear it all. It's good. No, no, if you wanted to speak, I didn't know if you wanted to speak. I just left it open. <laughs> like he got a flight. Excuse me. Could we? Excuse me. Thank you. New Yorkers. You got me. Further, no, thank you. Thank you for thank coming. Thank you, Chief. Thanks, Chief. All right, now, 
Right, now that public you comment. Too. Public comment. Period. Thank you, Miss. Now that you lightened it up for me, I yeah. might be able to say this. Um. <laughs> you better go out the back door. <laughs> you got to walk in. Oh my God. <laughs> All right. It's okay. It's like it's making it easier for yeah. me. Yeah. Okay. Um, I want to thank the Hampton Fire Department under the direction of G a Chief Ayotte, um, their dedicated service for assisting my father last Wednesday. I'm sorry. Read this part here. And then one, Captain okay. Justin Cutting, All right. um, firefighter paramedic, Jim Squires, Jim yep. Squires, yep. firefighter, Advanced EMT Dean Sonis, um, Ambulance One Firefighter Advanced EMT Brian Eagley, Firefighter Paramedic Jeremy Timpson. Thank you very much. My whole family appreciates your service. Thank you. Rusty? All set, thanks. Rick? Yeah, I'm glad that you, your father had the opportunity to have the good service that's available. He did. Thank you. All right, <laughs> moving on to the consent agenda. Patrice Lane, poll petition, Unitel Gas, Shea Porter Hampton, open office hours, June 2017th, use of Selectman's Room, and Dance Hall Permit, Victoria Inn and Pavilion, 430 High Street, 2017. I'll make the motion to move the consent agenda. Second. <laughs> okay, and I have one question. I had, a, I had an email today, somebody asking me about Shea Porter, using the selectman's op, uh, room for uh, office hours and I think we've clarified it that the ordinance is that it cannot be used. The intent, as I recall, the intent of the ordinance was for partisan political purposes. In this case, there are office hours that customarily have been held by especially our federal office holders who have a staff member come to listen to constituent concerns, which does not appear to me to be an election type activity which was the primary focus of my recollection of that, that, that. Frank ended it all the time. Yeah, so uh, it's, we've it's done, we just opened yeah, it up to another senator. It's campaigning. Correct. Right. So okay. I don't see any reason to, to not you. do it. All in favor? Opposed? None. Appointments. Chris Jacobs, DPW Director. Jennifer Hale, DPW Deputy Director. A, DPW Asset Management yeah. Funding Memorandum. Good evening. Good evening. Right. <coughs> um, the item before you is a uh, request basically to ask to act on the warrant article that was approved. Um, the department's gone through a uh, solicitation process to uh, procure asset management software. <coughs> Quickly, what that is is to keep track of all the myriad of things that we're uh, asked to do. Uh, just in the last two weeks, I know we've been a day late and a dollar short on uh, certain things that the department was asked to do. Uh, not a major uh, issue, but at the same time, uh, I'd like to nip this in the bud. Um, so the asset management software is basically going to allow us to um, know all the things that we have to maintain, where they are, what our important documentation and repair schedules are married to that, and then uh, also part of it is going to be a, uh, a call-in system eventually. It'll take about a year for us to get that up and running where people can basically uh, call for service. Uh, we can review those calls for service and if they're true and appropriate and within our jurisdiction then we create work orders and uh, that establishes a priority and then we get these things done in a timely and orderly manner. So. Uh, the original uh, process was, and still is, that we um, used a loan uh, and 100% loan forgiveness through DES. Uh, speaking of Dan Fenno at the state, we are still eligible and still, well, he's still waiting for the bill. I'll put it that way. The software that we selected <laughs> is uh, People GIS. It's going to cost us $49,000. That's the actual software package. and. Uh, the training package to get us up and running. Um, and that simply is what we want to do. And the, I think the allowance under the Warren article was 60000 
So what I would recommend based on um, the pursuit, as you call this, has been approved by one article, Warren article. Uh, you would authorize the town manager to execute the necessary documentation to uh, make the purchase training and all of the items that the Warren article authorized. Uh, we've reviewed this. Uh, Fred did have some reservations initially. We resolved those last week sufficiently uh, by reviewing this with uh, the appropriate folks, and we think it's an appropriate thing to do. So I'd ask for a motion. motion. Okay. I'll second. Motion by Rusty, second by Regina. Uh, any discussion on this? Thank you. All in favor? B, Unitel gas request to open pavement on Exeter Road. Uh, this is just me bringing forward a request from Unitel. Um, I sometimes wonder how I got to be the bearer of this, this particular torch, but I did. Um, they sent me the letter. Um, I just basically forwarded it with a cover memo to you. As you're probably aware, Unitil for the last four summers has been re replacing all of their steel uncoated gas mains in the in our city's roads. Um, Roby Street has to happens to be one of the last ones. It happens to be one of the smaller ones. Um, they need to. It's a one inch service. Uh, it's on the opposite side of um, Roby Street. Roby Street's on the east. It's on the west. And so they need to cross trench uh, Exeter Road, and um, they want to remove the one-inch service, and they want to put in a two-inch service because uh, they also need to increase the capacity. I asked if they could bore under the road. They say no. They pounded this one in ledge when they originally placed it. So they basically got to go down in and clean out the trench and then replace them full inside. Um, because this got paved in the last five years, it requires you to waive that policy and allow them to exit, enter the road. I have full confidence that Unitil Gas will um, make the road. <coughs> You'll know there was a trench there, but they will make it whole, uh, including probably having to come back in later in the summer, heat the pavement up, and uh, literally smooth or rake it right out smooth. So uh, I know they have the capability to do the best job possible to restore the pavement, but it does require your your approval in concert with mine. Rick? Regina? I'm good, thank you. Rusty? I'll make the motion so long as they go with how the Public Works Director just described how they should do it. And we do have a policy, a written policy for uh, these types of uh, repairs, and it does uh, include uh, retro reflective or uh, heating of the pavement to basically rake it smooth. What, what if they were not to do it? Would, would there be a problem? What if they were not to replace the line? What would the problem be? They would not be in compliance with a federal requirement okay. to replace all bare steel by the end of 2017. Which is a safety be, issue. Which is a safety issue. And okay. as with any excavation permit in town, I mean, they will be responsible for this trench for the next five years, and we will have collected a bond uh, to assure that it gets repaired the right way. Right. We have a standing bond with them anyhow. <laughs> okay, so we're making a motion on allowing them to put the trench give a waiver on give the a waiver of the five years so <coughs> allow them to put the new gas line in second all in favor opposed unanimous release a 10 percent bond retention for n street this is fairly uh, straightforward uh, it was a development plan uh, approved and built uh, according to the planning board all our inspections have been done. Both our highway foreman and our sewer and drain foreman have signed off on all aspects of the driveway permit drainage and sewer. Uh, it has been a year, and uh, we don't have Essential any issue housekeeping with housekeeping issue. Okay. We need, a, we need a vote on this, yes? Yes, please. So moved. Second. Rusty moved it. Seconded by Regina. All in favor? Opposed? Anything else? I uh, just asked to be prepared to give you a brief uh, five-minute update of uh, what we're doing, where we're going, where we've been. I want a quick overview okay. of major projects that are affecting the town and traffic while they're here, just for a really quick, Chris. Sounds good. <laughs> overview. <laughs> really quick. I even Chris. typed it out. State of script. <laughs> yeah, but then you get selected. They're going to ask questions. <laughs> That's okay. That's their privilege. And I have another subject I want to talk about with them. Okay. Uh, we finished paving on Mill Road, Acorn, and Cusack. Um, we still have the shoulders to back up 
and uh, we're going to end up going back in and repainting the center lines, fog lines, and there was a, like a crosswalk at the end of Cusack that got paved over. Um, GMI is, uh, has installed the base course of paving on High Street. We're adjusting some curbing and some drainage structures there. Uh, it'll take most of this week, uh, weather dependent, I, so I don't expect the final wearing course to be installed uh, until just before the 4th. They're again weather depending. Uh, Aquarian and Jamco are uh, flying down the uh, Lafayette Road. They've been installing about 100 to 150 feet of pipe per night. You probably noticed that they didn't get to all the pavement repair last night, but I'm sure that they will tonight or early tomorrow morning. Uh, Drake Side Road construction is due to start just after <laughs> the Independence Day holiday. Uh, we didn't want to mess up, um, clo have to close that section of road before the holiday. Uh, but when we do start that, we will be closing the road. That's going to be the uh, removal of the trees, uh, take away the granite abutments, and then we're filling the road in the lowest spot about five feet deep. Uh, the contract got signed by the contractor today. Uh, we have a gravel bid due June. Uh, we're still writing a paving bid for the 17 money for this later this summer. Bicentennial Wall, we met with Ty and Bond last week and gave them sufficient information, made sufficient decisions uh, that they'll be able to start the uh, permitting that needs to get done. It's about an eight to nine month permitting process. We're trying to keep them on online. We are going to reach out um, for a review uh, with you folks and a meeting with the interested <coughs> residents in that area to get the final details, i.e. with the benches, things of that nature. Being able to discuss, you know, outlay, you know, which way the engineers are proposing to move forward and why, uh, give you sort of just like we've done with the other projects, you know, why we're trying to move forward with certain di design elements and have basically that public hearing so we can get comments. Mill Pond Design, we met with them April 13th, uh, gave them final go-ahead, had some questions that they needed to answer on May 21st. They're proceeding with getting their permits so we can keep that project online. Dam. That's a fall That's low a water. Dam. Yes. Yeah, Mill Pond Dam. Yep. In Atlantic Ave, I went down, took some measurements, um, painted some very thin white lines, and heard back from the residents that they loved it because it actually made the first weekend that they had paving, they had some or parking down there, they had some structure. But I did express to them that mine was only to take measurements, that I still have to work with the police and the fire chief to look at some safety concerns. The road narrows as it gets further down. And the last thing would be that we would come back to you for any final determination of number of parking spaces where fire lanes might be, might not be. So that's not a closed uh, item yet. That's all I have. Thank you. Rick, you had something? Yes. Um, I was wondering, you know, about, I'm sure you must be aware of how the beach was a mess this I morning. Heard. Yep. Yeah. There were everywhere, all of the barrels were full over, uh, sometimes there were five and six different barrels that were filled, overflowing to the ground. And the same thing with the pavement. I have pictures of it. But... <clears throat> You know, and I understand that they have problems. Uh, the first time I went out was at 9 o'clock, and I had many people call me, and that's why I went. Then at 12.30, I was leaving to go somewhere, and that they were just picking them up at 12.30. Right. But the beach was full, and there were lots of parking. Um, you know, and I, I think that we need to at least voice some type of... Uh, to the record that this was in a deplorable condition today. Uh, obviously, they knew it was going to be really hot, and if anything, it was almost could be even a health issue with all the way that people were going into the beach and all of those barrels were everywhere. And there's still the uh, the, the comment about charging for parking and not giving us our services. And that brings me up to, I got a ticket, sent somebody down just for a minute, and I was kind of not happy with the way that we were treated. Even I was not the one that was driving because I would have left my car right in front of the place like everybody else does. But the person that was driving my car 
tries to do the right thing and put 50 cents into the meter just to pick up the sandwich, now we have to pay a $25 ticket, which, you know, I realize it's a problem. But it's a problem in so many bigger ways because <clears throat> I see this is at the condos, uh, I think it would be 337, um, which is the condo that Green & Company built where Jimmy, Ken Jimmy Bobby Preston and Kara and them, they, where they live in the commercial units downstairs. I know it's not our uh, business to try to worry about those people, but I don't see any of those businesses being successful there. And, you know, they made, I think we voted on it, about how all these businesses should have, these condos that are in need to put uh, commercial in this particular area. Uh, those businesses are fighting for their life, and that's the only reason I went down there to get a sandwich. Uh, and, you know, I, I just think that there's, you know, it's something that we're going to have to look at. I know there's no answer. I plan to pay my uh, ticket. Uh, the guy immediately said, uh, oh, it's, it's too soon. I can't take it back or whatever. And uh, I don't know. I just think it was pretty bad the way Plus, this day, there weren't any cars being there. There were only probably five cars. And somebody had to run down here. I went down to talk to them afterwards at the uh, state thing, just to ask a few questions of how it all works. And the guy that's in charge of the people that hand out the tickets, there's plenty of them. No one to clean the beach, though. Um, he evidently only works till 12 o'clock. So even though I think the minute the meter must go off that, you, that you've, uh, your ticket thing has, you know, your time is up, somebody must run over there. They must know exactly where to go. But the minute this guy left the office, all four of the people that were just sitting there having a good time. No one stood up when I walked into the office. Like it was not a professional feel to it. Um, I don't know. It's not really our business, but I don't like getting the ticket, but I'm going to pay it. So. so if I can jump in on a couple of those. Rick visited earlier, and I'll leave you to deal with your ticket issue. And, mm -hmm. you know, they, they apparently are pretty efficient because I don't think their thing notifies them when it dings to go off. So it seems like a bit of unluckiness there, or they're fairly efficient. But well, with, efficient. Regard, with regard to the trash issue, after you came in today, I reached out uh, by email to uh, Mr. Huntsman and Mr. Bryce asking the question. I was uh, referred back to Brian. I thought he was already done, but he's apparently there. And he indicated that they have very limited staff and that that's what led to the problem on the nighttime collections. I want to say he was less than half of the staff that he's expecting to have. Uh, I then inquired whether or not they think, because we're struggling with that from our trash pickup crew of getting sufficient people. Uh, they feel confident that as school ends, they will have sufficient number of people to deal with it. But that was the answer they gave us. We did call it to their attention that we had received numerous complaints here. Uh, we had some photographs that you had shown me that showed it to be in poor condition. They acknowledged that they hadn't got out there and they were working on it to deal with it. Uh, and that staffing was their issue. So the parking ticket, what was the third issue? Um, that's fine. Okay. But I communicated that issue off to them. They are aware of it, and they are struggling with staffing. And as I explained earlier, we are as well. Normally, how big is our trash crew? 10, 12? Yeah. And we have two? We just barely got enough. So staffing issues are an issue throughout the beach. I mean, you're seeing numbers, as I understand it, and some dishwasher jobs making $19 an hour locally because they just can't get staff. Um, so we are challenged with that in our house. We see that they are as well. I agree with you. We still got to do the best we can to figure it out. But we did call it to their attention. Our folks got our stuff picked up, so yep. we're going to expect the same from the state to keep the beach clean. Yeah, Maybe. that's the point I wanted to make. Our side was perfect. Right, and I want to extend on that a little bit. I understand that staffing is an issue everywhere right now, but at the same time, we've known since at least early last week that we were going to have a couple of 90-degree days right. in Hampton, New Hampshire. All right, now the state, unlike us, has a lot more resources than we do. So maybe it's time that when there's gonna be a 90 degree day and it's been three weeks of rain and everyone's gonna to head toward the beach, that they decide that they need to take some people from other places and bring them down here for the day. 
Yeah, and that's always been the crutch of the problem. We've always had this problem. It's always it's getting kind of <coughs> late though in the year for it to be a problem. Yep. Usually right. it's in May when the yep. problem right. exists and they have their stuff together by this Colleges time. Colleges should be out by now. When I, they are. when I left yeah. and went at 12:30 out onto the highway uh, or maybe it was earlier. I was telling uh, Jamie that I did see, and he pointed out that it's DOT. They were cleaning the highways mm -hmm. on the side of the road, and they were, looked magnificent. Full-time so, staff, great guys, mm -hmm. but for some reason, they don't they don't support just, one another like I do. I'm not going to defend the state at all, and yeah, I, I all agree right. that it needs to be done. But they are everybody's having a problem with those visa problems. They're not getting the foreign students that they've been able to get before. I have a question: High Street, the hole in the street. Where it's draining, right in front of the the, the con, uh, yes. condos. Yes, so the paving is the drainage improvement that we're okay. going to be working on. All right. Yeah, because I'm trying to repipe. It comes that. up through one and down through the other. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. All right. Is we're trying. Can... We're trying to get it adjust the curbing yeah. and the piping so that at least it doesn't pond on the streets. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and well, we it's, it's working a lot better. A lot better. We know. Better. We won't be able to eliminate the high exactly. tide situation. Yeah. What we have determined. Is that the water is not the water behind those units on High Street is not traveling to the west to the normal outlet? The Phragmites have grown up so much that it's actually just traveling right down to where that culvert is. So it's backing up. Preston. And to that point, I think now is the time that we start looking at what are we going to do to mediate that. I, I know you're trying to already do some stuff with it, but we're going to have to long, term, long we're going to get a wetlands permit and, and actually dredge. And uh, <laughs> both sides of the road there, I'm afraid. Probably. You know? It's all hydraulically connected, so it's, right. if you I don't. Know, I mean, the, the eel pond there has not been dredged in. But even eel pond, I mean, the day years, I looked at it, years. that was 12 inches lower, and the water wasn't flowing that way quick enough. So uh, it's going to be something. We, we have to start looking at that. Yeah, we have I, to start I know you don't have anything going on, and you're, you're not doing much, right. but you know, put something else in <laughs> <laughs> You yeah. your tongue really well, John. Yeah, she did. My timing is always great. <laughs> Are we all set? I'm all set. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Nice evening. Yep. Uh, manager's report given by the assistant manager. Just a couple of items uh, that Chris was talking about. Um, the Public Works paving operation on High Street, week of June 19th, after raising structures, continues. Uh, the Aquarian project on Route 1 is expected to, now that the rain has settled a little bit, we expect that to pick up pace. Uh, remember that's night work from 10 to 6 a.m. And the state DOT is continuing their work on Route 1, which includes the closure and detour of the Route 1 southbound off of Route 101 off ramp. So that will be closed if that work continues to be done. And that's what I have. For that. Any questions and comments? Rusty? No, just to continue with that, you're going to see a lot more truck traffic on Exeter Road over the next week or two while they have that area closed because. The trucks cannot get off, or cars cannot get off on Route One at its south. Rick, no, thank you for your report. Thank you, sir. I just have a question that, that we had a question last week or another week, or maybe the week before that, on uh, procedures at the beach and how it ties in with calling nine one one and, and dealing with our firemen too. And when there was an issue down there, a first aid issue, and we were working with the state if we could get what their procedure is have we heard anything from them uh we i did see an email that uh, came back to the manager when that initial one went out that talked about the procedure of what took place there yeah uh, according to that email to my recollection <clears throat> that circumstance was again where uh, a, a child had stepped on or somehow foot came in contact with a hypodermic needle um, it was the description from them that the parent removed that and then took them to the lifeguard. The lifeguard gave them a sharps container and recommended that they go to the hospital. What that process talked about was that is their process. Their first responders and immediate first aid medical people are their lifeguards who are trained. In this case, uh, the, the uh, lifeguard who was there, I think, is an EMT, they said, and a firefighter. Uh, their procedure is to have them be the first triage screening um, and involve that person makes the decision when to contact the ambulance. That has been the process for many years. Uh, this particular case, we can quibble with that, and it certainly seems prudent that, that the ambulance be called to me, but that was a decision they made. They did have a sharps container. They indicate that they do have a process in order to give that out, uh, and that's basically what the email said to us. 
Okay. We were never called or consulted on it, uh, and as a result, our folks weren't involved at all. Is it is it something that we feel we should be at least notified? Well, I think, in general, my experience, they do an awful lot of, you know, the, the, not that this is, but they do an awful lot of uh, heck, lost children, uh, things yeah. like that that the protocol and police would handle differently. Um, this is not unlike that. Um, I guess they have two different kinds of uh, uh, processes. That's the on the sand for the minor scrapes and butt, you know, band-aid, that sort of stuff. And then as they bring people up to their first aid station, maybe more for uh, heat stroke or heat problems or call when there is an emergency. But essentially what they said is their folks are, are trained in first aid and they make the first assessment. Obviously our druthers is to use our fire department when appropriate, and that's what we advise them to do. Great. And I'm, I'm just wondering from the aspect that it's a drug par paraphernalia, most likely that... That, that is know, they, the they, most likely, but it, it could be a diabetic right. needle, it could be anything. It's still concerning. Yeah, uh, the lucky in this case that the needle was preserved, put in a sharps container, and sent with, uh, in this case, the parent apparently wanted to take the child to the hospital themselves as opposed to use an ambulance, and as I understood it, that's what happened. Okay, thank you. All set. All right, <coughs> well, business, obviously, we've uh, done away with Big Bernie's beach bar. Um, we also, under old business, are going to bring up, we, I had another email questioning the purchasing policy and the purchasing policy that we signed. There is some, conf there is confusion with what was done and whether we did it appropriately and we need to clean it up. We need to work on it. And I'm going to let Jamie talk about it because he researched it this morning with Christy and they went through the whole thing and then Mark might have something to add on it. We all took a look at it pretty thoroughly today, um, and so we'll take it in two parts. Okay. First part is um, the process of dealing with that policy, as I understand. We did some research, go back, look at your minutes, and, and generally I would say yes, there is confusion there, uh, and it needs to be cleaned up. Let me start with the practical part. Once this was brought to my attention today, we did some research, two things are there. One, um, the $15,000 limit that has historically been the number, um, as a practice, that's what's being utilized. All your big three department heads all believe that that's the number. Uh, there's been no further directive to them to change that. Uh, Christy was aware of that as well. And further, I asked you to go back and look at all of the purchases that exceed that limit this year. What was the process? And in every case, it's bid process or they come under one of the waivers to the board, sole source, a waiver for a particular reason. Every one of those that we've researched for this calendar year fit that, pr that criteria. Um, I do know that there was some discussion about changing things in there. That's something that the manager was, was primarily in charge of dealing with. We do have a, a historical thing we put together for you today. We'll put in your boxes for your review that takes um, what we could find from the minutes of your meetings, all of your discussions that took place on this issue, so you can read that and absorb that and deal with that in your next set of meetings if you need to. Okay. Okay. Okay, very good. Any questions? Mark, did you have anything? That's fine. Any questions on that? I, I just think good. we need to clarify it. We need to clean it up. We need I agree. to make sure that it is what we've signed or what we've voted on. And, you know, I, I think sometimes people in the public try to assign motive to something, which is not the case. There was no motive. Yeah, I think you'll see the chronology, and Fred can speak to what the motives are, but the chronology yeah. is fairly clear as I go through it. There is one vote that is, that is confusing, um, but it, it, as you go through it, from my read of it, there hasn't been a substantial change to that policy from what was existing as the 15000 as the maximum amount, the standard policy. There were discussions about moving that number. Uh, I know the managers reported to you there's a draft. There, there's absolutely a chronology within the minutes that absolutely is confusing on that. There is a vote that the board took to reaffirm a vote, but we find no actual vote in the first place. So you can't really affirm a vote that doesn't appear in the record to have taken place. Okay. So clearly there is further discussion you need to verify what you want, whether it's the existing policy as your department heads have known it, and it is, or do you want to make some certain tweaks to that? That's certainly okay. within the bird. So program. we have all that information that we can all look over? Yep, there'll be packets it. put in your boxes for you to <coughs> review on that chronology with all of the minutes of what took place. But again, I want to assure you and the public that the 15,000 limit has not changed that's what the department heads have been operating under, uh, and that's what our understanding of how it's supposed to work until we hear differently from the board as a directive. Okay. Anybody have anything on that? 
Thank you. Thank you for researching that. Uh, new business, Mark, I think you have something? Um, yes, uh, you've experienced, I know, and have seen ever since the town meeting vote in March approving Article 33, which allowed the board to modify deed restrictions using the 4114A process, that a number of people have come before the board uh, with the result that at least two have reached the point where modifications have been made. Both of those were to fence height restrictions and uh, have resulted in uh, my office drafting a document that's suitable for recording to verify that, and the board has signed that. Um, all of this experience has led us to realize that uh, and it, it may be important to have a process put down in writing about what should be followed and what should be submitted by applicants. Uh, there has been at least one con uh, occasion when the planning board, which is the first entity along with the Conservation Commission, which has asked for its comments, itself has some questions, well, what is this all about? And so what this has led us to do is to recommend to you that the a process be uh, adopted, which includes the submission of certain materials by the applicant up front, which can be passed to the planning board for their perusal. And then uh, by the time it gets back to the board with their recommendations, this board will also have a full packet and can assess the impacts of what's being asked about, not only for the property involved, but for abutting properties. And so uh, I've, we have, I have issued a, a memorandum to the manager which recommends the process and uh, the piece of it that would be recorded at the, I mean, put online on the town's website uh, would be the following. Uh, so that applicants will know what needs to be submitted. Uh, moreover, at the very end, uh, there would be uh, a fee required, which corresponds simply to what is a $16.49, the anticipated length of the document that would be recorded to modify any particular restriction if it's approved. And we're at the stage where that fee would need to be collected for the uh, for the two that have gotten to the point of the board signing off. So I would simply ask if the board can approve this, uh, this particular process, then we can proceed to collect the fee, record the document, and make sure that the board's actions are properly documented. I'll make that motion, Mark. Does this aerial view mean it has to be a photo, or can they just do it from a, a uh, drawing? Um, our system at the tax assessor's office has the so-called GIS system. It allows, uh, and, and that can be accessed by people to show uh, the view from above with the lot lines imposed so that, for instance, if someone wants to modify a, a setback, uh, then you can see, well, if you modify it to take it closer to the line, what does that do to the abutter? whose property may be also close to the line, is there enough room for firefighting apparatus, that so type of thing? So is it available? That's available. That's available. Okay. Thank you. It's like the Google Maps or whatever. Yeah. So Correct. Yeah. All right. Make a motion? I made a motion that we uh, I'll implement second it. this. Regina, Rusty, all in favor? Okay. Anything else? No. Thank you. Uh, anything else? May I ask closing comments? Okay. Very good. Adjourn. Adjourn at uh, 8.33. Second. All in favor? Opposed? Very good.